Hey everybody, Beth Helvey, Couture Real Estate. I hope you're doing well today. It is Wednesday, October 21st. Uh, today it is a bit dreary and rainy and we have our cold front where it's going to be like 83, 84 degrees today and then tomorrow's going to get warm again. So let's talk about multiple offers. I know a lot of you dealing with that where you are and we're dealing with it some here. Um, as far as what is and isn't allowed in your state, if you're not in Florida, you're going to have to talk to your realtor about that. But I can tell you what is, is, is and isn't allowed here in the state of Florida. Basically this, buyers, if you put an offer on a property, of course, as your realtor, I will call the listing agent and say, hey, do you have any offers on the property? The listing agent nor the seller is obligated to tell us if there are. They don't have to. That is completely and utterly up to the seller's discretion whether or not they want to actually tell us that there are multiple offers on the property. Um, and I know that sometimes buyers will get upset because we'll find out after the fact that there was another offer and they feel like they can't get in there and um, compete uh, if you are that person then you need to probably start off with a really good offer or at the very least, don't lowball it, okay? Because lowballing it is what gets you in trouble and there's still quite a bit of that going on, even here with low inventory. Uh, now, hi Sandra. Now, what does happen is buyer, if the seller does have multiple offers, they have a myriad of options available to them. They can talk to every single buyer. They can counter, hi Marty, every buyer if they want to. It does get tricky because they have to be extraordinarily careful that they don't go under contract with more than one buyer, okay? Uh, so you have to be very, very careful about that, but they can. Oh, I know, right? Uh, the market is crazy, Sandra. So they can do that. Um, the What they may do is say something to the effect of, I've got X amount of offers on the table and we are going to ask for your highest and your best by X time on X date. And then the listing agent will then notify all the buyers. Sometimes they put a notification in MLS if it's a particularly hot property and then all the offers are presented to the seller and they give their decision. Now, just because the seller says, I want all of your offers in by five o'clock on Thursday does not mean that by five o'clock on Thursday, you will have an answer. It means that by five o'clock on Thursday, everybody has a chance to submit an offer and then the seller will look at them. And to be perfectly honest, the more you have on the table, the less likely you are to get an answer right away. You may not hear till the next day, which is kind of a pins and needle thing, I understand. Um, now let's say the offer, excuse me, the seller gets multiple offers. They pick one. They can still go back even after a highest and best situation and counter. They don't have to accept it. They don't have to do anything. They could tell everybody, go away. I'm not talking to any of you. They can also still counter. So just because you submitted highest and best does not mean that that is what you're going to end up with. Your seller might still counter you. I mean, it's the way it is, okay? It's just a way to organize it, and sometimes it's a way to kind of drive up more offers and kind of find out where people really are with their offer. How serious are they? Um, and to be perfectly honest, it's not always down to price. I've been in multiple offer situations where the seller took a uh, conventional offer over a cash offer because sometimes the terms are better. Cash isn't always best. It is a lot, don't get me wrong but it's not always best. There are other terms within the contract that may or may not work for that seller. Buyers, if you think that you're going to be involved in a multiple offer situation, it is always good to have your agent call the listing agent and go, what do the sellers need? Do they have a time in which they need to be out of the property? Do they need 60, 90 days? Can they be out tomorrow? So it's best to, when you first put your offer in that you craft it so that you are presenting the best offer you can and you don't have to go back and forth. You wanna limit that time of going back and forth in today's multiple offer situation um, arena so that the sellers basically don't have the opportunity to get another offer. Sellers, here's where it gets tricky for you. 
in our particular area, because a lot of people here are buying properties because they want to and not because they have to, hey Rick, it is not unusual for you to send out the highest and best uh, notification and have your buyers back out. Um, there's a term that buyers use about competing against themselves and that's how they feel. And however you look at it, that's how they feel. There is the chance that if you send out a highest and best amongst your buyers, if you have more than one offer, that you will have one buyer or possibly all buyers back off and then they will not make an offer because what they'll do is they'll either move on to the next thing or they'll play the wait and see what happens kind of uh, approach. And again, it's because a lot of our buyers are buying property because they want to, not because they have to, because of the nature of our area. The other thing you need to be careful of sellers, and I caution all my sellers about this, do not play the game where you are going to send counter offers to multiple people. Because if you send two or three counter offers back and even two of them sign off and send it back, you are now under contract to two people legally. And it is much harder for a seller to get out of a contract than it is for a buyer. So be really, really careful about that. Be very mindful of what you're doing. And uh, just, it's a risky, risky game to play to do that. I know there's agents out there that do that. I know there's sellers out there that want to do that. Um, if you're in that situation, it doesn't hurt to just call the other agent and say, hey, listen, we really like your offer, but this is what we're thinking. What do your buyers think? Um, and kind of feel it out. Or just respond to one of them. The one that looks the best, just respond to one of them. Okay. Oftentimes in this situation, what the seller will do and what they should do is once they go under contract with one of them, you really should contact all of the other people who put an offer on the property and ask if they want to be in the backup position. I have sold many properties where I represented the seller or the buyer and there was a backup and the backup offer is the one who actually ended up closing on the property. It happens uh, and it doesn't hurt. And we've talked about backup offers before. It's actually really kind of a, a good situation for the buyer to be in. It gives them a lot more choices and a lot more options. Um, but that is basically it. So when you are in this situation, buyers, you know, make sure that when you submit your offer, you have all of your information, all of your addenda or fill out. Um, you have the correct information on the contract. You have your pre-approval or your proof of funds, because I can guarantee you that when a seller receives the offer, if they receive multiple offers, they're going to likely go with somebody who can prove they can pay for the property without having to call them and say, can you prove you can pay for the property? And then have the buyer say, I haven't been pre-approved yet. They're not even going to talk to you because, you know, you may get a pre-approval that day. You might not. Um, and that is how the, pre the multiple offer situation is going in this area. We do have pockets where there's multiple offers going on. Um, it's certain neighborhoods and at certain price points. So you need to be prepared before you get there. Um, and like I said, you may not know that there's more than one offer on the property. You may not because legally speaking, the listing agent cannot tell you whether there is without specific direction from their seller. The seller has to give permission to the listing agent to divulge that there is more than one offer on the property. Okay. So make sure of that. And, um, and then the seller is then, they can handle it however they want to upon the advice of their listing agent. That's pretty much it. It is getting a little crazy out there. I know that there's other parts of the country where properties are going under contract within a week, if not days. We're not quite there yet. We do have some pockets that are like that, um, but we still have a little bit of inventory. We're only at two months, but we're not like the rest of the country. So if you have any questions on multiple offer situations and how they're handled in this area, uh, let me know in the comments or send me a DM. Just remember, seller doesn't have to tell you anything. Yeah, it's their house. They don't have to tell you a thing. Uh, so be prepared, buyers. If you think the property is going to go quick and if you see that there's a lot of people showing it and if your buyer agent goes into showing time and sees how many appointments were made, that'll give you a big clue. Um, so be prepared. Sellers, make sure that you understand the difference between telling people that there's multiple offers and not. And if that works with how you want to sell your property and what you need in that particular situation. 
So I hope everybody has a good day. It is uh, cloudy and rainy and misty and gross, and I think it's gonna rain pretty much all afternoon, and then tomorrow we're gonna be nice again. I know that some of you northern areas probably had some snow recently. Hey, Don, I have to put my glasses on. Oh yeah, eight written offers in 24 hours for Don Bear. That's because she's a rock star. And uh, it gets crazy. I've been in that situation, Don, and um, it gets crazy to manage. And uh, probably what Don did too is that your seller will likely go with the most completed offers and the offers that have proof that they can pay, whether that be might be a um, pre-approval. So uh, she's absolutely right. So have a great day, everybody. If you have any other questions about real estate in general, please throw it in the comments or send me a DM. I love hearing what you all have to ask and I will talk to you later. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.